I don't feel like singing any more of the song, but I think I got the point across. Skip it up and that up. So I don't even know if you would call this a review. Let's just go with review random ways to play your PlayStation 5 USA. I've done a video playing a PlayStation 5 on my son's 720p budget TV. I've done a video where I played the PlayStation 5 on a CRT, HD CRT TV with an HDMI input. And I don't know why I'm fascinated with playing the PlayStation 5 in random places, but here is an interesting one. In this video idea, I tripped across because Anchor, my apologies to you, many moons ago, uh, sent me out something to review. This isn't the product that we're actually taking a look at today. This isn't the main product anyway. This is the original Anchor Nebula capsule. Um, and they sent it out to me in 2018. I got it from them. It stayed sealed in the box and I never got around to reviewing it. I even forgot that I even had the damn thing in my office closet. This is when I actually had an office. And years later, through the strange algorithm on YouTube, I believe it was shout out to Lon Seidman, there was a video up of his Nebula Capsule 2 review. And he generally liked it. And I was like, oh man, wait a second, why is it the cobwebs in my brain? Oh yeah, years ago, Nebby or Anchor sent me one of those, <laughs> and I never got around to reviewing it. So I took it out, I found it, wiped the dust off the box, and uh, no sir, I don't like it. Um, the first one anyway, it works, there's nothing, I don't think anything hardware-wise wrong with it, YouTube runs fine on it, but I couldn't sign into my YouTube app. Yes, the I updated the software completely. Um, the HDMI input that's on the back here, it works fine, but it like goes from 60 hertz refresh rate to 30, back and forth. Trying to game on it was an absolute nightmare. Now again, like I said, this thing sat in a box for three years, forgotten. Again, Anchor, sorry. So maybe that's a reason why it was running strange, but I wasn't very impressed. And it, like I said, it didn't seem like a hardware issue. And yes, I fully updated the software. I even tried previous updates for YouTube and other things to see if I could get it to work better. No luck. So this left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. But then, like I said, I saw Lon Seidman's review and he really liked the Nebula Capsule too. So I went out and bought one because I wanted to watch TV and play video games on the ceiling of my bedroom. And I bought one and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's not perfect. We're gonna talk about the flaws of the Nebula Capsule 2 in a second, but I liked it so much that I reached out to Anchor and asked them to send me out the Nebula Capsule 2 R2D2 edition. And that's what I have right here. It looks like R2D2. <laughs> Um, it's the same exact thing as the regular Nebula Capsule 2, except it looks like R2-D2, and when you first turn it on, it makes the R2-D2 sound effects. That's it. That's that's what the difference is. So, really, when this is MSRP, you're spending $120 more than the regular Capsule 2 because it looks like R2-D2, Unless you're a diehard Star Wars fan, I don't recommend it. But you could actually find this right now on Amazon for with a coupon for $4.99. It's actually cheaper than the regular Capsule 2 at the moment. So, depending on, at that point, yeah, sure, fine. If you really want something, if you really want your projector to look like R2-D2, go for this one. Um, but if, you, if the other one's cheaper, I would say get the regular capsule too, because there's no difference in between them besides that, that's it. Well, anyway, aesthetics aside, this is a pocket projector. I don't really see how this could fit in your pocket. I've seen some other reviewers say that the capsule two is a pocket size projector. What, are you wearing Jenko jeans? What, <laughs> what pocket are you fitting these in? But whatever, it's still, it's like an oversized beer can or soda can. And this is an Android 
TV 9.0 smart TV and a projector that's very small. Now, first and foremost, if you think you're getting a 4K HDR10 projector and something the size of a can, you're not. It's gonna have brightness of 200 ANSI lumens and it's a 720p picture. Now, before you stop the video and run away screaming, it still looks good. It still really looks good. Obviously, if you have to have a dark enough room, if you have a super bright room, I wouldn't get any kind of projector to put in there, but especially it, it, it just, it's gonna be a washed out picture. But if you have a dark room like I do, it looks great even at 720p and even with only 200 lumens of brightness. And this actually runs Android TV. There's no kind of custom software on here. So if you wanna watch YouTube or Twitch or Hulu or download other apps or even Netflix, even though you have to kind of sideload Netflix for, through the Nebula Manager app, which there's some kind of requirement that there has to be a certain install base um, for a product for Netflix to be directly available on it, but it's still not a big deal. You download the Nebula Manager app and you're using full-fledged Netflix on here. But it has a whole bunch of apps built right into it. So you don't need, this is all you need. You don't need to have something, even though it has the inputs, I'll talk about those in a second. As long as you have an internet connection and you have this with you and you have a flat wall or you have a projector screen, you have a smart TV in a can which is pretty damn amazing if you think about it. This also has Chromecast built into it. So any compatible app on your phone that works with Chromecast, you can mirror it on here. So that's a huge plus as well. And this has a tripod mount. So if you wanna watch this, if you have a flat matte white wall, on the outside of your house, you could use that or you could get a portable projector screen, use that. You could put it this way, which I do, and you could play PlayStation 5 on your ceiling. But before we go into that, let me go over some of the specs of this projector. Now this could pump out an image up to 100 inches and still be clear. And it has a built-in 9,700 milliamp hour battery. So you're getting about two and a half to three hours of screen time on the battery. I never use it on the battery. I always have it plugged in. So if you wanna bring this to a barbecue and you're outside and it's the evening and you bring a projector screen with you, you can sit there and watch a movie outside while you're eating a burger and drinking a beer. So real quick, there's not much, but I'm gonna go through also the IO of the Nebula capsule too. We have the IR sensor right here. Uh, below that, you could actually use the Nebula Capsule 2, not as a projector, but just as a Bluetooth speaker. And the sound quality in this projector is surprisingly good, so you may actually want to do that. You have your power button below right here. On the bottom for charging, you have USB Type-C, which is awesome. There's no kind of proprietary power connector, so if you, want, if you lose the charger, you could use another charger. Um, so you have that right there. That's not for data, just keep that in mind. Uh, next to that, you have USB-A, so if you want to pl plug in like a flash drive or something or watch video off of there, you can do that as well. Next to that, you have a full-size HDMI, which is the star of the show for this video because that's where I'm going to be hooking up the PlayStation 5 to. And next to that, you have an auxiliary output, so if you don't want to use the internal speakers, you want something louder, you can actually put in headphones or you could hook it up to a sound system and... There you go. You could actually make this part of your home theater if you want to. Now here is the remote for the capsule too. And if you look right here, you're seeing a Google Assist button and it works just as advertised because this is Android TV on here. If you wanna say, hey, look up this show or what's the weather today or whatever, it, it, you could actually do that while laying in bed like I do and watch TV and ask, hey, what's the weather? Hey, turn, put on this YouTube video. Hey, do this, hey, do that. Again, this is Android right on here. The only complaint I'll have about this remote, and I also have the other capsule too, so there's no defects with either of these products, it's just a software bug, is that sometimes, because this remote runs with Bluetooth, I'll have to resync it, and it's not that the remote fully stops working, it's just that like Google Assistant will stop working until I repair it with Bluetooth. I make it forget the device and repair it. It happens like I would say once every week. It's a little bit annoying. I've also tried multiple remotes um, and they all seem to do it. So I'm gonna count that as a software book. Also, I will say too, uh, the first remote I got with this was defective. Anchor had to send me out another one. The HDMI to smart, where you could switch over to HDMI and then go back to Android TV. 
uh, this button would actually mute the volume, wouldn't actually switch over to HDMI. I tried resyncing the remote countless times. I even tried that remote with my other capsule too, which I purchased before I got sent out this review unit. And it also had the same issues there. So look, defects happen. They sent me out another remote. It works perfectly fine. Whatever, it's a remote. I just wish they made it so if you needed to order a different remote, it was easier to do. I went to Anchor's website, couldn't do it. Luckily, they sent one out to me. So Anchor, make it a little bit easier if people want to get extra remotes or extra accessories to get things like this if they need to. Now, there's another two complaints I have about this. One is minor. One, at least for me, I don't know if I would say it's a major problem, but it's annoying enough. The first one is this has autofocus on it, which is really cool. Um, as soon as you turn on the projector, it, ha it has laser focus and it'll make sure that wherever the screw, where you want the screen to be, say I want it to be in the ceiling, it'll make sure it focuses so the picture looks clear, usually. Once in a while though, you'll have to, if you hold down the HDMI button, um, it takes a second and it'll come up and try to focus again. And usually, and sometimes you'll have to do that to make the picture look nice and clean and not look, look blurry at all. But needless to say, you know, it's a little annoying that you have to focus more than once. But again, it's, it'll take all of two seconds of your viewing time. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, so that's not a big deal. Because if it doesn't get it the first time, you hold down the HDMI button, you'll see the blue focus icon come on the screen. It focuses perfectly fine and you're good to go. One thing that does annoy me is Roku TV has this where you could download if you have like a TCL Roku TV they have an app on there um, that literally turns your phone into the full-fledged remote and if you have kids like I do I have three young kids it's a godsend because no matter how hard you try the actual physical remote will get lost and you could put it in a safe and I think my children would find a way to break into the safe and find the remote and lose it so having that app on my phone that replaces the remote completely is a godsend. Now, Anchor also has the Nebula Connect app, which acts like a remote for this, but not only is it really limited and it doesn't have all the features of the remote, it's really janky. I have pretty damn good internet at my house. I make sure everything's connected to the same network and it's laggy, and if you're trying to scroll through the apps and, and, and use it to navigate, it doesn't work that great. I'm gonna actually say it's pretty much borderline useless. And again, I tried this app on two different Capsule 2s, and I tried it on different phones, same result. It, it's just, it's not a great app. And it's a shame too, because to me, having a remote app to act like your remote is really important so i hope that they update that in the future just if you buy this and you have kids just hold on to the remote with your life <laughs> because if your kids lose this it's also tough to get a replacement trust me i know so i i don't think the footage that i recorded uh did this justice i know that people are hearing oh my god 720p and he has like an 80 inch image on his ceiling, red flag, that probably looks terrible. It really doesn't text on the PlayStation 5 if you need to read text in the UI or in a game. It's fully legible. The colors are really pop, pop more than I ever thought I would see from a low brightness or 200 lumens projector like this. And games run great. Like I said before, there's minimal lag for a DLP projector. It really feels responsive playing platformers like Ratchet and Clank and playing games like Streets of Rage 4 felt really good. Playing Call of Duty felt great. I played Ghost of Tsushima and it's just a really immersive, amazing experience. I could lay flat in bed. I don't have to tilt over to look at a TV and I couldn't, Im I never thought that I would want this, but now I couldn't imagine living without a projector and for full transparency i'm not sponsored by anchor like i said i bought the regular capsule too and was so in love with it that i reached out to anchor to see if i could review this and they said yes i will be upfront though would i buy this as a replacement for like a 4k 120 nano cell tv you could get the 49 inch nano cell for around the same price when it's in stock 
No, of course not. This isn't a replacement in my in my eyes. At least this one, anyway. This is not a replacement for a smart TV or a 4K HDMI 2.1 TV. Is this is not going to compete with that? But to be able to play games in <laughs> my bed and have them on my ceiling and it be completely comfortable is amazing. To have the YouTube app built into here and. Amazon Prime Video in here and having full Android TV functionality in something this small that if you have a flat matte white wall or a tiny screen projector or any screen projector up to 100 inches, you could use this. It's such a versatile device. And someone, I was actually watching a YouTube video on it, and he said, I travel a lot. And most of the time in the hotels that I go to, the TVs are terrible. So I pack up the Nebula Capsule 2. I have my little uh, screen that I pull out. And so long as there's internet, I'm good to go. And I'm like, Jesus, that's a really good point. So if you move around a lot and you travel a lot, this is something to think about as well. And like I said, don't let the low resolution fool you. The picture on here is really nice. And generally, I'm very impressed with it. It's not perfect. I uh, Hopefully, the Nebula Capsule 3 will address the issues that I mentioned in this video. But I still can wholeheartedly recommend it. And if you could find the R2-D2 edition for around 500 bucks when it goes on sale, sure, why not get the one that looks like a piece of Star Wars swag? Can't hurt, right? It's the same product as the other one. So... Anyway, yeah, this is awesome. If you get your hands on it, I'll have a link below in the description. It's not an affiliate link. I don't get a kickback from that. So guys, check this out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Also make sure to sub to the channel and click the bell for notifications. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Hey, if you enjoy my content, consider becoming a Review Tech USA member. I'll have a link below in the description. I live stream now on this channel all the time, and it gives you access to cool emoticons to use as well while I live stream. Again, link below in the description. Thank you for your continued support.